In this demonstration, we're going to be discussing the various individual cranial bones of the cranium, starting with an anterior view of the cranium. And I always like to begin superior and work my way inferior. So we'll talk about what we can see from this view and then also discuss the lateral view, posterior view, and inferior view uh, of the different bones that you'll encounter. So from this anterior view, most superiorly, we have the frontal bone. And this is a large unpaired bone that forms the majority of the roof of the eye orbit. And the eye orbit is quite complex. It's actually composed of seven individual bones. And we'll discuss those after we've done our general overview. So frontal is unpaired. It's going to articulate at the midline with two small bones that form the bridge of your nose, the nasal bones. Okay. The nasals are going to articulate laterally with our maxillary bones, which we can see here and here. And the maxillae house our upper teeth via these individualized sockets called the alveoli. There's also an air sinus we'll discuss called the maxillary paranasal sinus housed within the maxillary bone. Lateral to our maxillae is where we'll find our zygomatic bones. And these sort of form the quote unquote cheekbones. Okay? And laterally, you can see the arch that the zygomatic bones are going to form with the temporal bone seen here. And again, we'll go through that in the lateral view. Continuing inferiorly, we have one of the strongest bones in our whole body, second to the femur, and that's the mandible. Right? And remember that the mandible and the cranium together is called the skull, whereas just the cranium without the mandible is the cranium. Okay? Moving on to lateral view, okay? we can see the temporal bone that articulates with the zygomatic right? at the zygomatic arch. Okay? And it's going to border the two large bones that form sort of the, the majority of our neurocranium, the parietal bones. And in this particular specimen, the clot has been removed to remove the brain. So if we re-articulate that, we can appreciate our parietal bones, okay, the left and the right, and how they articulate with the temporal bone. Flipping to the posterior aspect here, we have one large unpaired bone, the occipital. And it's going to be quite dense in its general morphology, has a lot of markings or muscle attachment sites that we'll talk about. And its largest feature, the foramen magnum, which literally means great hole. And that's where our spinal cord is going to exit from the intracranial space.